Is your island boring? Is the drama as non-existent as your love life? Well, have you considered using a save editor? Hero everybody, I am Hero Forever and today I'm going to be walking you through exactly how to use a save editor. But what even is a save editor? Why would you want to use one? And how does one use it safely without corrupting anything? Luckily for you, I've already spent 8 years figuring that out. I've been using save editors since I was 11 and have corrupted my Tomodachi life save dozens of times. And now I can share all the info my big brain with you. Uh, note. Anyone can hack a 3DS model, but the save editor only works with US or EU cartridges. I'll explain more later. Okay, no more yapping. Let's do this. Let's start with a quick vocabulary lesson. What does save editor mean? Just take the name literally, folks. It's software that can edit your save file. The stuff that can be edited depends on the game and the information that's held within the save file. In Tomodachi Life, the Mii's wants and needs are kept in your save file, so they can be edited. On the other hand, and the actual code of the game isn't, so you can't use the save editor to make custom outfits or make new items. Reasons for using a save editor can be wanting infinite money, wanting to skip certain parts of a game, wanting to restore items you had in an old save file, you know, the list could go on forever. Next, we have the terms hacking and modding. What do they mean? Well, hacking is an unauthorized attempt to bypass the security mechanisms of an information system or network. And modding is short for modifying, as in to change something, but it's short shortened term seems to have taken on its own definition, the activity of making changes to a computer's software or hardware. When it comes to the 3DS, these terms are used interchangeably. If you want to be specific, you could say that first we hack the 3DS to get past its security, and then we mod it to add custom firmware to the console. But if you see someone saying they're going to hack or mod a 3DS, they're talking about the same thing, okay? But what is custom firmware, you ask? To put it very basically, Firmware is software that controls hardware. It tells your devices what to do, okay? Someday a firmware nerd is gonna yell at me in the comments, but I'm trying to make it simple for the people that don't know. Anyway, custom firmware, abbreviated as CFW, is unofficial or aftermarket firmware made by someone to add new features to something. It's like administrator access on a computer. Custom firmware lets you do anything a 3DS is physically capable of doing. To use a save editor, we have to install custom firmware onto your 3DS so we can access the Tomodachi Life save files. The thing is, video tutorials for hacking 3DSs aren't recommended because of how quickly they become outdated. What you should do is follow this website, but I know not everyone is good with written guides, so I will walk you through the website in a more vague way so it still makes sense when it inevitably gets updated. Before we proceed, please watch all of this video or read the entire website before you start anything. There have been many times where I've started the process of hacking something only to realize that I didn't have all of the needed items to complete the process. Also, if your 3DS is already modded, then you can skip to when we just open the save editor, okay? When you open the website, you'll see a bunch of descriptions for things that are probably explained way better than I explained them. Make sure you actually read that before clicking the continue button at the bottom. Okay, unless you've clicked a different button, then you should see a page called key information. This explains everything you need to know. I will go over this in case they remove it or you can't find it. So first of all, this guide will work for all 3DS models, including the 2DS ones. You also need a computer that can read SD card. If you have a PC, then you'll probably need an adapter, but if you have a laptop, it should come with a built-in SD slot. Your 3DS must have an SD card in it. The card has to be bigger than 2 gigabytes, but no bigger than 128 gigabytes. If you have an old 3DS, no extra circle pad, then you need a big SD card. And if you have a new 3DS, extra circle pad, then you need a micro SD card. Also remember that if you do something wrong, you could brick your 3DS, which means it's useless and doesn't work at all. It it literally becomes a brick. Though with 3DSs, this is very hard to do. I've never bricked anything before, by the way. But if you follow the steps and back up everything you're told to, then you can reverse the brick if it does happen. It is your responsibility to not do something stupid and it's not my fault if your 3DS breaks, okay? And finally, some extra terminology. Root of the SD card means not inside any folders. It's just pasted right in the open. And slashes indicate folders. So slash folder one slash folder two slash means put the file inside folder 2 which is inside folder 1 which is in the root of the SD card. Remember they have a discord if you get really stuck. There's also an FAQ and a troubleshooting page. Okay actual hacking time. Get your 3DS and turn it off. While holding select turn your 3DS back on. If you let go for even a second you have to do that again just to be sure. If your 3DS looks like mine then lucky you you get to skip ahead because somehow you already have custom firmware. If your 3DS looks absolutely normal then stay on the current page. Now, 
Go into system settings and look at the little code at the bottom of the top screen. That is the version of your 3DS. This is where your page might look a little bit different to mine, so my instructions will be a bit more vague. Pick your 3DS model and then input the version of your 3DS. When you hit confirm, the website will take you to the hacking method that will work for you. There have been so many of these over the years. I remember being 11 years old and using the Nintendo 3DS sound app to hack my first 3DS. Ah, the good old days. Anyway, now you gotta pick your operating system. Mine is Windows and there's a good chance yours is too because who uses Apple? Okay, the page you're on now will either be identical to mine or completely different, but it should still be formatted the same way. Under the what you need section, there will be things for you to download. For me, it's the mset9 files and Python on my PC. You should download whatever it says before continuing, okay? The next section is prep work. Unzip whatever files you downloaded and move the corresponding files into the folders specified. If you are told that some files already exist and overwrite them. Please follow the steps very slowly and make sure you don't skip anything, but don't panic. Remember that it's very hard to break a 3DS. A lot of the links on this website are images to help guide you, so use them to your advantage. I can't show you the exact steps because one, I don't know which method you're using, and two, my 3DS is already modded. Quick reminder to eject your SD card. Don't just take it out. I know it's highly unlikely that something will happen, but the odds are not zero. Okay, section two, the actual hacking bit. Whatever you do here is what breaks through the 3DS's security. Make sure you're extra careful as you follow the steps. For example, part of this mset9 hack requires you to make sure your 3DS is hovering over system settings when you turn it on. If it isn't, then you have to turn it off and then on again. And then we get to section 3. This is the easy bit. Just follow the instructions on your screen. This is installing the custom firmware. If you're doing the mset9 method, then make sure you uninstall it afterwards. It causes problems otherwise. When you're done with the page, click on finalizing the setup. Now that we've hacked the 3DS, it's time to mod it. In this section, you're going to back up something called a NAND. This is the most important bit. The NAND is basically all of your system files, the core of your 3DS. If your 3DS ever gets bricked, you need a backup of your specific NAND to fix it. After the NAND backup, you'll also install some useful applications. Side note, the only one of these I've never used is FTPD. And why is it the most useful one of the lot? Where have you been all these years? Download the files specified, yours will probably be more similar to mine this time. In the prep work section, move all the files into their specific places on your SD card. Remember, the root is in the SD card, but not in any folders. Also, if you have to create a folder like the payloads folder right here, make sure you spell it correctly and remember that it is case sensitive. Section two asks you to update your system. Do this even if your system is up to date, it doesn't hurt anything. And then section three wants you to sync your 3DS clock via the Rosalina menu. So follow the steps to do that. If your steps look different, don't worry, just do exactly what the website says and completely ignore me in that case. Okay, once you follow the rest of the guide, you need to back up the GM9 backups folder. This is your NAND. You need it if you break anything. Don't lose this, please. Yay, your 3DS is modded now. Or maybe you already had a modded one and skipped to this part. Anyway, now we are ready to actually use some save editors. First, you should have some fancy new icons on your home screen. The one we will be using today is Checkpoint, aka the little flag. Checkpoint can access the save files on any 3DS application and can back up up or replace the save files as well. Okay, so enter checkpoint with your Tomodachi Live cartridge inserted into your 3DS. If you have the digital version of Tomodachi Live, that's fine, you don't have to do anything. Inside checkpoint, use the circle pad to navigate to Tomodachi Live and then press A. Then click on the new button on the touch screen. This is creating a backup of your Tomodachi Live save. You can name it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. When that's done, you can turn off your 3DS and put your SD card into your computer. We'll be needing it in a second, but first we need to download the Tomodachi Life save editor. But before we do that, I want to explain that because save editors aren't official, they can be very buggy. This Tomodachi Life one specifically has a lot of problems. I have corrupted my save before, even the specific one I still play on to this day with Tummy and the gang. Not all corruptions can be fixed, so always keep a backup and be careful. I will explain the best way to do things and why, but it's on you if anything happens. Linked in the description is the save editor. I recommend not downloading the newest version. The 
newer builds, especially the EX ones, act very strange. Half the time, if you input something that you want to happen, it just doesn't even do it. 4.0.1 is the one that I always use. Not the EX one, just the regular. It's a lot more reliable, and I found that it even loads a bit faster. I'm not sure why that is. The only downside to this version is that it can't save me needs for long periods of time. It's a bit odd, but say that you made a me fall in love using the 4.0.1 editor. If you wait until the next day before clicking on that heart, then it'll just go away. The newer versions don't do this. The problems will stay like a natural one would. But I'd say the cons outweigh the pros when it comes to the new and EX versions. Okay, once you've downloaded the save editor, unzip the files and open the folder. First of all, you can just delete the EX version. It's really bad. Unless you like it, then you do whatever you want, okay? Before we open the save editor, I want to show you the backups folder. Every time you use the save editor, a backup is automatically made of your save from before you edited it. So if you corrupt anything, this is how you fix it. Keep in mind that most other save editors don't do this, so it's good to get into the habit of making your own backups. Okay, open the save editor, then click on the button at the top to select your save file. From there, go to your SD card, open the 3DS folder, then open the checkpoint folder, then open the saves folder, then open the Tomodachi Life folder, and then open the folder with the name of the backup you made earlier. And in there is your save data. Click it to open it. Remember, this save editor only works with European and American Tomodachi Life saves. The region of your 3DS doesn't matter, just the region of the cartridge or game files. I'm not sure why this is. I haven't seen any other save editors do this, so if you have a 3DS from another region, you'll have to get a Tomodachi Life cartridge from the US or EU. Side note that the mods we add to the 3DS remove the region lock so you can play out of region games no problem. Okay your save is open now. You should be seeing this menu unless yours is a different version then it may look like this. They all work the same but things may be in different places. Right now we're inside the island edit menu. Here we can unlock locations, ranking board things, apartment renovations, give yourself money, and we can change some general info. Be careful about doing too much. If you force unlock things you should have the game could break. The next menu is the fun stuff, the me edit menu. We can edit how me's look, even locked QR code me's. You can change their gender, but don't do that if they're in a relationship. It corrupts the game. You can change their names to bad words. This thing has no sensor, which is pretty funny. You can change their favorite foods as well as level them up. There's also this button that says he never had to eat again. I'm not sure why that's been added, but don't use it. This is like the Tomodachi life equivalent of an extreme diet. It's not ending well. Moving on, the thing you're all probably the most interested in is the relationships panel. This is what can give your me's problems, aka force them to be in love! <laughs> I don't do this because I think that natural stuff is funnier, but if you want your OTP to be canon on Tomodachi Life, then go right ahead. I just want to point out that in the drop down menu, anything that says no correspondence is an unknown problem. The save editor can detect that it's a problem that the me has, but it's unsure of what this problem is is because it hasn't been programmed in. These are mostly all of the rare problems, like a me wanting to get back together with another me. Next menu is the friend list. This is the problem child of the save editor. If you're gonna corrupt your save data, then this is most likely how you're gonna do it. But why is that? Well, it's in the way the game keeps track of me's. You see, Tomodachi Life will allow you to have up to 100 me's. Every time you make a me, it is assigned a number from 1 to 100. The number isn't random. They'll get the lowest empty spot available. So if you have 43 me's and then you make a new one, it'll go in spot 44. Unless you've deleted a me before, that is. That is the problem with this game. When a me is deleted, its spot opens up, but the other me's don't move up to fill the gap. If you delete me 26, me 27 won't move up. There are no promotions here. Instead, the 26th spot will remain open until you make a new me. But what does that have to do with corruptions? Well, it all comes down to the dastardly friend all button. This stupid little button that I mentioned in my infinite hearts video. You see, when you hit the friend all button, it doesn't set all your me's to friend. It instead counts how many me's you have and sets those slots to friend. Why is that bad? Because the stupid thing doesn't account for the deleted me's. Pretend you have 43 me's again. You had 44, but then you deleted me 26. The stupid button just sets the first 43 slots to friend. So poor little me 44 stays unfriended and the empty me slot 26 is set to friend. And that's the problem. If you don't realize this and continue to save your data with an empty me slot friended, the game will act normal until you try and make a new me. While making this new me, the game will see that there is an empty slot, but it can't fill it. It thinks the empty slot is a me because it has a friends list. I am now calling this phenomenon Scrodinger's me. The me both exists and doesn't at the same time, which freaks out the game.
game and boom, corruption. That is why the friend all button sucks. It's such a hassle to use that button and then have to scour each me to make sure it's not friended to an empty slot. Just do it manually, okay? Oh, so yes, I did purposely corrupt my data to film this. This is why we make backups. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, the last menu is their inventory. It's pretty simple and self-explanatory. The main thing is if you're planning to force two me's to get married, make sure they have the same house picked and that it's an empty house slot. I don't know if Schrodinger's house exists in this game and I don't want to find out. And once again, do not marry two me's of the same gender. It corrupts the game instantly. The next menu is for items. You can give yourself whatever you want. I've never had a problem with this. This is how I have so many travel tickets, by the way. Then we have the extras panel. This is pretty much corruption station. All of the functions here should be labeled use at your own risk. This game is not meant to have any of this stuff, so the chance of it working flawlessly is minimal. Honestly, I have no clue how the repair menu works. What are we repairing? I think it wants you to input in a hexadecimal, but one. I don't know hexadecimals. And two, it's not saying what to input. Besides, anything I've accidentally broken can be fixed by restoring the backup I made, so this is useless anyway. And finally, the song menu. Why would you use this? You can just make songs in game and it's faster anyway. I guess if your 3DS keyboard is broken somehow, not sure how you do that. Wait, actually, I've done that once before. Never replace the keyboard CIA file, okay? Uh, the manual is just an outdated version of how to load your save file and the settings is changing the language to French. And that is everything about the Tomonachi save editor, yay! So, now you've edited everything you want. How do you put your save data back onto your 3DS? Well, first make sure you hit save at the top, then the original save data you loaded in will be replaced with the edited one. Don't worry, there is still a backup in the backups folder. Next, eject your SD card, put it back in your 3DS, open checkpoint, and click the right shoulder button to put it in Tomodachi Life. And then you're done! Unless you've done some hardcore messing around and corrupted stuff, then your game should be fine. If that's the case, then open the backups folder, take that backup, put it in the checkpoint Tomodachi folder, and then restore the backup good as new. But there are some extra things I want to cover before you go. You know I always have something extra to say. First of all, not all save editors are the same. The new Leaf one, for example, is an in-browser editor that can do a lot, but it doesn't make any backups. I can go more in depth for the new Leaf editor if you'd like. Let me know in the comments or something. Anyway, be careful when using other save editors. Keep backups and make backups of your backups per chance. I also wanted to go over the region locks again. So once you've modded your 3DS, it'll automatically be region free. But sometimes if you're playing an out of region game, you could see this error. If this happens, then you need to go into this app, the Universal Updater. You need to download this app called the Luma Locale Switcher. What it does is it tricks the game into thinking it's being played on the right system. And then that error goes away. And there you go. Now you know how to use the Tomodachi Life Save Editor to its full capacity. If you have any questions or need help, feel free to ask down below. And also, if you have any other video suggestions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments as well. Anyway, thank you all for watching. But for now, I shall bid you farewell. Bye-bye. <laughs>